Sadara Smirza. I'm a consultant, uh, hepatobiliary and transplant surgeon. And I work at the uh, Paul and Avi Mumbai Hospital and also uh, I'm attached to the uh, Queen Elizabeth Hospital and University Hospital in Birmingham, England. Liver transplantation is the treatment of choice in patients with advanced liver disease, what we call end-stage liver disease. Uh, to achieve this diagnosis, uh, you've got to be able to predict that the lifespan of the patient is probably less than one to two years at the point at which liver transplantation is being, uh, is being considered. Liver disease can present in a variety of different ways, uh, both in adults as well as in, uh, in, in children. Common presentations include uh, the development of yellow jaundice, retention of fluid with swelling of the legs and swelling of the abdomen. Sometimes they can present with evidence of internal bleeding into the bowel, either with vomiting blood or passage of blood in, uh, in stools. Liver disease may also present with uh, more subtle symptoms like tiredness, sleepiness, uh, loss of energy, uh, the inability to concentrate. Uh, and then uh, in the later stages, you might have uh, further deterioration with weight loss, loss of energy levels, worsening jaundice and, uh, and other symptoms like confusion as well as uh, even the more severe symptoms like uh, periods of uh, going into a liver coma. The idea is that these patients would, uh, would, would see a member of the multidisciplinary team, usually the gastroenterologist, hepatologist, then meet up with the surgeon, then undergo a whole series of, uh, of, of tests to see how advanced their liver disease is, to also see whether or not they would be suitable for a transplant from a blood vessel and anatomy point of view, and uh, lastly also to see if they would be fit enough to undergo this complex uh, procedure, both in terms of their heart status, their lung status, and their general nutritional status. source of donor liver organs uh, can be from uh, people who are dead where they have expressed a wish to consider organ donation or it can also come from live donors. These are usually living related transplants. There is another situation where you may also consider organ donation after cardiac standstill, so after a heart death. And these are called non-heart beating donors. So the liver donation procedure is a big operation. It has got risks, but these risks are as low as they have ever been. So removing the left lateral segment from an adult to a child has a risk status that is marginally above the risks of, say, donating a single kidney. When you donate the right half of the liver, you're taking away approximately 55 to 60 to 65 percent of the liver. In this situation, the risks are slightly greater. And we would put this risk at approximately 0.2 to 0.3 percent in terms of a mortality risk and a 10 to 15 percent risk in terms of other smaller complications. So the liver transplant is, is, is essentially an operation that has three parts. The first part of the operation involves removing the diseased liver. Now because of the presence of scarring in the liver, the liver cirrhosis, the pressures in the blood vessels are high. Sometimes because of infections there are lots and lots of adhesions. And then lastly you often have varices which are blood vessels that are very friable and can bleed quite easily during the removal part of the operation. So a combination of all these factors makes the removal of the liver a difficult operation both in terms of uh, uh, the risk of blood loss as well as the, uh, the risk of uh, complications to the patients. You then have a period where you do not have a liver in the body at all. During this phase the new liver, whether it comes from a dead person 
or from a living person is stitched in. You stitch in the outflow, which is the vena cava first. You then stitch the inflow of the vein, which is the portal vein. And you then stitch the artery so that the double blood supply to the liver is re-established, after which the blood is recirculated through the liver. And then the third part of the operation largely involves stabilizing the patient once the new liver is in, making sure the blood clotting is optimized, making sure there is no bleeding and that the liver is working. And then the last part of the operation involves joining the bile duct of the new liver to the patient's own bile duct or a part of the bowel if the bile duct is not usable. So children are quite commonly affected by liver disease and they usually get affected very early in life. So unlike say kidney transplantation, we have to sometimes consider liver transplantation in children under the age of one year in life. If you get the operation correct and choose the timing correctly and the operation goes without a problem, these children grow into completely normal adulthood. So it's very important to identify these children at a time where the chances of transplantation have a good chance of succeeding. Even in the Western world where there are lots of donors available, we still have a shortage of children becoming donors. So almost always children will get part of a liver, either from a dead person's liver where they can get a reduced liver transplant or a split liver transplant where both halves of the liver can be put into two different patients. Or they get part of a liver, usually from a parent or sometimes a, a, an aunt or an, or an uncle in that, uh, in that uh, situation. Children do have the need for additional support after the transplant. The intensive care units have to be able to cope with children as small as 3, 4 and 5 kilos and adult sized children. So they've got to be able to cope with a very wide range of, uh, of patient size. Now you have the involvement of specialist pediatric dietitians, specialist pediatric pharmacists, specialist pediatric play therapists, specialist pediatric educators who help teach the child and the parents how to give the medications and also to explain to the children the importance of taking these medicines on a regular basis into the long term. The results of transplantation are as good as they have ever been. We would expect in excess of 90% of children to survive a transplant and do well into the long term. And the figures are not, not dissimilar, so approximately the same for planned adult transplants. Yeah, so most patients who require a transplant have been on long term medications anyway. You start off after the transplant receiving lots of tablets, maybe eight, maybe nine tablets. But once you get to about three months after the transplant, that is reduced to two or three tablets. And at least two of these tablets land up being lifelong medication. In general, we advise patients to be prepared for a hospital stay of approximately two weeks. And if they go home earlier, they should treat that as a bonus. And if they stay a little bit longer, it is usually because of a complication or because they were very sick before the transplant. Most patients who have a liver transplant will lead a completely normal life. They have got an increased risk of infection, especially in the first few weeks after the transplant. So by the time you get to two to three months, people have got hardly any restrictions left. And then most people who would like to work are in a position to consider going back to work between a period of three and six months after the transplant. So in conclusion, liver transplantation is an established form of treatment that should be available to everybody with advanced liver disease, whether you're a child or an adult.